Ezra chapter number 5, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Then the prophets Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Idu, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem, in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, and Jeshua, the son of Josedach, and began to build the house of God which was at Jerusalem, and with them were the prophets of God helping them. At the same time came to them Tatnai, governor on this side of the river, and Shathar Bonsnai, and their companions, and said thus unto them, Who hath commanded you to build this house, and to make up this wall? Then said we unto them after this manner, What are the names of the men that make this building? But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews, that they could not cause them to cease, till the matter came to Darius, and then they returned answer by letter concerning this matter. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your love. Your great love wherein you loved us even when we were yet lost without God. Sinners on our way to hell, you loved us. Sent your Son to be our propitiation. Die on the cross of Calvary. Shed his life's blood, Lord, to pay our sin debt. Father, was buried, rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Uh, that we too could be saved from our sins. Uh, and Lord, overcome the terror of death by... Lord, being saved by the good grace of God. Lord, knowing that you said to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. Uh, now, Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for the singing. Thank you for the time of fellowship. So, Father, we pray now you'd help us, Lord. Uh, Lord, you'd put a hedge about us. You'd manifest yourself. You'd step out from behind the shadows. And, God, you'd do something special in our midst. Uh, Father, we need you, and Lord, without you, we can do nothing. Uh, Father, we pray you'd be glorified, and God, uh, you'd be magnified, and God, the people of God would uh, 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 be helped today. And God, I pray if there's any amongst us uh, strangers to the grace of God, uh, Lord, they may be good moral people, but God uh, may not know Lord, the Lord Jesus in the free pardon of sins. Uh, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray for the next few minutes the sweet Holy Ghost of God wouldn't be grieved or quenched, uh, but God, he just uh, 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 walked through this place and do a work in our hearts. Uh, Lord, when we leave, we'd leave different than we came in. Uh, Lord, uh, restore unto us the joy of thy salvation uh, and do something special for your people. Uh, Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Uh, use this unworthy vessel now. Glorify your namesake. Uh, We'll thank you and praise you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of Jesus we do pray. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. I want you to notice a couple things as a way of introduction. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, uh, the instructing. Uh, we find in verse number 1 that Haggai and Zechariah began to prophesy or preach to the Jews, uh, both in Jerusalem and, Judea, uh, and Judah. Uh, what a blessing to have a preacher. Uh, what a blessing to be instructed in the ways of righteousness. Uh, what a blessing to hear what thus saith the Lord. Uh, hey, uh, there's anything they needed, they needed to hear from heaven. Uh, they'd been in a mess and been in captivity. Uh, and God raised up a crew uh, to rebuild the work uh, there in Jerusalem. Uh, rebuild the walls. Uh, rebuild the house of God. Uh, what a blessing when God's are doing a work. Uh, what a blessing when God uh, lets his people know he cares uh, and that he's there for them. Uh, they were instructed uh, and it did something for them. You say, what did it do? Well, notice uh, it, uh, uh, the impulse uh, to preaching. Uh, look at verse number 2. Uh, uh, then rose up Zerubbabel, uh, son of Shealtel, and Jeshua, son of Joseph, uh, and began to build the house of God. Uh, uh, what uh, happened? Uh, there was an impulse to preaching. Uh, it caused folks to want to go to work for God. Uh, hey, what happened? Uh, I used to when preaching got on. Uh, uh, people got serious about the things of God. Uh, rolled up their shirt sleeves, went to work for 
God. Uh, hey, if there's anything we need today, uh, it's some folks that are willing to be used of God uh, to make an impact in the lives of those that don't know God. Uh, we see the instructing, we see the impulse, and I notice the inciting. Can I say anytime somebody gets uh, happy for Jesus and God gets to doing a work, the devil's crowd won't like it. In verse number 3, it said, At the same time came Tatnai, governor on this side, and Shathnar Bosnai. Anybody that's got a name like Shathnar Bosnai, he's up to no good, okay? Mm. And their companions. Can I say, they always got a crowd that runs with them. Hmm? Uh, and they said, Who hath commanded you to build this house and make up this wall? Don't worry about it. Hmm? That's what I'd have said. Uh, uh, verse number 4 then said we unto them after this manner what are the names of the men that make up this building uh, they was wanting to know who, who commanded them and who was doing the building hmm? uh, it's kind of like today uh, you get COVID like Melissa she sounds like she's got something right there what in the world is going on girl oh uh, Lord have mercy somebody lay hands on her and heal her alright huh uh I mean you know you get COVID and then they want to know everybody you've been around Hmm. Just like you start doing something for Jesus, they want to know who, who's all with you. Hmm. I like it when they get a little worried. Hmm. So we see the instructing, we see the impulse to do a work, we see the, the incited crowd, they, they showed up. But then notice the inspiring. Look at verse number 5. Now this is what the, the devil's crowd, the crowd who's against the house of God being built, this is what they said. Said, but the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews that they could not cause them to cease. Hmm? Said, we tried everything in the world to get them to stop. He said, but the eye of their God was upon them. We couldn't cause them to cease. I'm going to preach with God's help on He keeps His eye on us. Hmm? Uh, Miss Nett showed me something the other night. There was this kid got in this paint and painted, got all over the wall, got all over the carpet, got all over the cat. There was paint everywhere. She said, where's the parent? Who's keeping an eye on the child? Hmm? To get that much paint everywhere, somebody wasn't watching that. I mean, they can get gone in a second, do all kinds of stuff. But you, you don't pay attention to them for about 20 minutes, they'll mess your house up. Well, can I say something? The Lord ne never slumbers nor sleeps. He keeps his eye on us. Huh? You know why? Because left to our own constraints, we'll get into some mischief. Uh, left to our own abilities, we'll make a mess of things. Uh, I'm glad he keeps his eye on us. Uh, I'm glad he's watching over us today. Uh, hey, you may feel like nobody cares uh, and that the Lord's not uh, uh, paying any attention to you. No, friend, he's got his eye on you. Uh, hey, if he knows every time a sparrow falls to the ground. Uh, hey, uh, if he knows every time a flower's cut down. Uh, hey, if he's the one that turned the uh, stars out on nothing, uh, tells the sun when to shine. Uh, friend, he's got his eye on you. Uh, he he knows the number of the hairs on your head. Uh, he knows the thoughts and the intents of your heart. Uh, he knows everything going on in your life. Uh, he knows your yesterdays. Uh, he knows all about today. Uh, he knows tomorrow, friend. Uh, but he cares. Uh, and he's watching you today. Uh, can I say this? Uh, he watches us to encourage us. Hmm? He does. That means brighten us up. You know, sometimes you have some dark days. Job says man's days are few and full of trouble. Hmm? Uh, sometimes it's just bad. And it just seems like everything you touch just falls apart. Huh? Kind of had a couple days like that this week. Huh? Everything just went awry. It's just one of them things. Uh, 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 listen, uh, 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 you live long enough, you come to realize that those days are going to happen. Huh? But isn't it a blessing uh, when everything seems like it's falling apart, when nothing's going good, uh, 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 seems like even your dog don't like you anymore, uh, all of a sudden you can get in the Word of God, and God just knows you something, uh, He brightens you up, uh, lets you know He's a watching, uh, it's all right, uh, uh, He's still on the throne, uh, hey, one of these days it's all going to be over, and the sufferings of this present time uh, are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us, uh, hey, 
you some of the most beautiful words in the Bible says that it came to pass uh, and it a blessing to know it didn't come to stay uh, one day it'll be over uh, and Jesus will still be Lord uh, and hey it'll be alright uh, he watches us to encourage us to brighten us up can I say this he watches to edify us that means to build us up it's one thing to brighten you up it's another thing to build you up hmm uh, it's one thing to tell you something nice. It's another thing to tell you some things to build you up. Build up your confidence. Build up your strength. Huh? God tells you things to build up your faith. He wants to build you up so you can be the best version of you, than you that you could ever be. He wants you to be strong so you can represent Him in this lost and dying world. Listen, I don't care how bad you got if you know Jesus. Listen. You're in the midst of a bunch of folks that have bad days and they don't have any hope. Only thing they got to hope for when they die is hell. Hmm. The Lord will build you up after He brightens you up. He encourages us. He watches over us to edify us. Hmm. Let you know He's there and it'll be all right. Hmm. Uh, can I say this? He watches to equip us to bolster us you know what preaching does it equips us for when we have those bad days on down the road hmm? what preaching will do is it will give you what you need when the enemy shows up or when the obstacle shows up or even when your own flesh gets in the way it will help you through those problems you may not need this message today but you ought to store it up because there's coming a day you will Every message is important to you. You, again, might not need everything in that message, or you might not need that message for that day, but there's coming a day you will. Boy, there's been times I look back and draw on a message I heard a preacher preach years ago, and boy, it gives me strength today. Mm -hmm. That's why it's good some of you take notes, because you're getting old like me and you can't remember. But you can flip back and see those notes. You say, preacher, do you still take notes? Lord have mercy. See, all these yellow, I got them all in my Bible. I'll pull one of them out every now and then and say, boy, that's a good little thought there. It equips us. His friends, the, the Apostle Paul told us to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We're in a warfare. Hmm? Listen, we, we, we don't like that kind of preaching. We, we want to hear that Jesus loves us and every day is going to be a good day. Well, go listen to Joe Olstein. He's going to be lying to you. Make you feel good right now, but when the bottom falls out of you, you won't have anything to help you. But I want to tell you what's, what's the truth is. You're in a warfare. The devil hates you. Hmm? He, he, if, he, if you're saved, he knows he can't get your soul, but he wants to make you so miserable you can't be a light to anybody else. But everybody around you, he wants to drag off into hell. He hates you because you'll become something he never could, a son of God. And you'll get to bask in the glory of God. He won't. He'll be in the lake of fire forevermore. And I say the world hates you. Because you just breathing is a testimony against their lifestyles, against their wickedness, against everything the world's for. Can I say your own flesh don't like you on days? Hmm? So what preaching does, it equips you for all that. It bolsters you. So that when the enemy shows up, you know to run and, and, and fall into the lap of the Lord. The enemy gets sight of him, he loses all sight of you. Let me help you something. There's nobody in this building from the pulpit to the back pew in any way, shape, or form ready to take on the devil. But I know one who can. He's defeated him every time he's come in contact with him. He watches to encourage us. He watches to edify us. He watches to equip us. But he also watches to enhance us, to better us. He wants to brighten us up, wants to build us up, wants to bolster us, wants to better us. The Lord Jesus never leaves anybody the same way he finds him. 
If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, behold, all things become new. When that's the parable, the good Samaritan, he found that fellow all messed up, religious crowd come by, couldn't help him. Uh, the philosophical crowd came by, couldn't help him. The good Samaritan came by, he poured oil in his wounds, bound up his wounds, took him down to the inn and had him taken care of, paid his fare, took care of everything, uh, uh, made a difference in that old boy's life. I preached one time on what happened after he met the Samaritan. I believe he went on and was good to somebody else. But can I say something? The Lord don't leave you the way. Hey, Brother Jim, when he saved you, he didn't leave you drunk. Uh, look at you sitting there all dressed up in the house of God. That wasn't the way you was 30-something years ago. Uh, he don't leave you the same way he found you. Mm, he betters you. Can I say, the more you get into the Scriptures, the more time you spend with the Lord, the more time you spend in the house of God applying what you hear, uh, you know what happens? He just makes you better and better and better and sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. Uh, and you get to glowing a little bit more. The closer you get to Him, the more, more you start shining. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants to better you. Can I say, most people in this world want a better life. You know where it can be found? In Jesus. Mm. You say, you, you're just so weak-minded, you need to depend on a God to take care of you. Amen. The only difference between me and you is I figured it out. I admit it. Mm. I have no complaints. I've known the Lord for 47 years. He's been good to this old boy. Mm. My life's a whole lot better. Uh he watches to enhance us. He knows what you have a need of. Then a lot of times he gives us some of our wants. He's just good to us. Huh? Can I say this? He watches to enshroud us. What do you mean by that, preacher? Well, he enshrouds us by hiding us. You see, the enemy can't, can't even approach us unless he gets permission. And the Lord hedges us in a lot of times because a lot of times we're not in shape to take on the enemy. He hides us. Hides us under the shadows of his wings, under the shadow of a great rock. Hides us in the hollow of his hand, friend. He enshrouds us. He hides us. I'm glad he's watching over me to hide me sometime. Otherwise, I'd be in a mess. Uh, can I say this? He enshrouds us by hedging us and he enshrouds us by hushing us. Sometimes he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hmm. See, we're all the time in trying to help God out. Sometimes he don't need our help. He just wants us to stand still. Hmm. He watches. Encourage us, to edify us, to equip us, to enhance us, enshroud us. Thought about this, he watches to elate us. Sometimes he knows just what to pour on us to make us happy, happy, happy. Hmm? The joy of the Lord's your strength. Hmm? Never forget one time, my granddaddy was preaching revival, and the family went to sing. And this little old lady got up to sing. Miss Cinda, she's 140 if she's a day old. I mean, she's an old lady. Her wrinkles had wrinkles. You know what I'm saying? This is what she did. She got up behind the pulpit and she said, I'm so happy, so very happy. I'm thinking, tell your face, lady. That's what I'm thinking. She didn't look happy. I've seen happy. You want to see happy? Look at Phil. I've seen happy. She wasn't happy. Uh, sometimes the Lord knows just how to squeeze us to get the joy flowing again. He watches to late us. He knows sometimes you're down. He knows sometimes you're hurting. He knows sometimes there's a black cloud over top of you. And he just knows in those times how to sneak up close to you, Brother Donald, and hug you up and just let you know, he says, I'm here. Huh? All of a sudden the clouds roll back. All of a sudden the bad day turns into a good day. Huh? All of a sudden the blues... Huh? turns into the joys and the brightness of the Lord. Uh, 
Hey, uh, I'm glad he watches to lay to us uh, every now and then he knows what we stand in need of. It's kind of like a mama knows her child like nobody else. She knows exactly when they need a cookie or a brownie. With Christian, that's all the time. He didn't get that big looking at brownies. Matter of fact, she she's already fixing dinner for this afternoon, and I went down to the kitchen this morning. There's a plate this big full of cookies and brownies. I thought Christians come to dinner. <laughs> hmm. uh, Mama knows her children. She knows when something's bothering them. Something's. Da- I've got I got good news. God's greater than Mama. He knows when something's going on. And he knows just the very thing we need to make us happy again. Hmm? Can I say? Happiness is temporary, but joy is eternal. Hmm? Don't ever get to the place where you let this world rob you of the joy of the Lord. So how, how, do I, how do I keep that? Just keep thinking about Calvary and what he done for you. Just think about where he found you. Just think about where you'd be going without him. That joy got to flowing again, huh? I thought about this. He watches to embrace us. Sometimes he just has to pull us close. You know why the Lord gave us the church? Because he knows we need one another. He fitly framed us together. Sometimes we need to hear through a testimony somebody has went through something and God's helped them sometimes we just need to come in and see somebody smile lifts our spirit sure. lift my spirit when I pulled in the driveway and see Miss Debbie's car out there I thought boy she's feeling better she's in church this morning uh, sometimes you just need to come and hear a song or something that just lifts your spirit but we need one another There's nothing like human contact. But can I say, there's something better than that. It's God's contact. There's something about His touch. And sometimes He just has to embrace us and bring us in. Let us know everything's all right at the Father's house. I thought about this. God watches to encourage us, to edify us, to equip us, to enhance us to enshroud us, to elate us, to embrace us. Without him watching, the devil would erase us. He'd do away with us. Tried last year. How many politicians said the church isn't essential? Well, they don't know what the church means to me. I can do without Walmart. I can do without Amazon showing up at the house every day. I can do without pizza parlor. But I can't do without the church. Hmm. The church is God's government on earth. Where God meets with his people. Without God watching over us, he'd erase, the devil would erase every one of us. Hmm? We wouldn't, we wouldn't exist. Check out church history. He's tried ever since the early church. During the period they call the Dark Ages, that thousand year period, it's estimated some 10 million Baptists were slaughtered. 10 million Baptists. Why? Because the devil tried to erase us. But I've found the more he fights and the more he kicks, the stronger the church gets. The more we grow, the more God does. You know why? Because God's a watching. You ought to draw strength to the day that God knows right where you're at, that he's a watching. Well, there's times you'll pray and pray and you wonder if God's even listening. He's listening. There's times you're going through things you wonder if God's even near. He's near. He's watching. 
that sometimes he allows us to go through those hard times so we'll appreciate the good times a little bit more. So I wonder this morning, he's got his eyes on you and I. How long has it been since we've had our eyes on him? That banner over the door out there, sirs, we would see Jesus. How long has it been since you've seen him? Through faith. How long has it been since you've heard him? Through faith. Through that still small voice. How long has it been since you've known he's a-watching? See, a lot of times he's a-watching, and we have no idea. Because we're not looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We're too busy looking around. There's a lot of time kids are playing, have no idea. Mama's is just sitting looking out the window watching, making sure they're safe. I wonder how many times, Brother Tommy, we have no idea how close he really is. Because we're too consumed with us not consumed with him when's the last time you was watching him boy you know what's a blessing brother Ron is watching him work in people's lives watch him touch hearts watch him answer your prayers watch him show up in your life when's the last time you saw him he's always watching you you may be here today and all this didn't mean anything to you because you don't even know him Friend, there's nothing like knowing the Lord. There's no one like Him. He's loved you with an everlasting love. He went to Calvary and paid your sin debt because you could never have earned or merited His favor. But He died for you so you could have a relationship with Him. He wants to watch over you. And friend, even though He's angry with the wicked every day, He has watched over you. And even allowed you to be here today. And he wants to change your life. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. If you don't know the Lord, we invite you to come. Say, preacher, I don't know what it takes to become a Christian. I don't know what it takes to be saved. Well, if you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. But if you're here today and you're saved, he's watching you. How long has it been since you had your eyes on him? Maybe you need to come and thank him for doing a good job. Maybe you need to come tell him you love him. Maybe you need to come and tell him you're sorry. He's watching. He cares. He knows. And friend, today he just might have wanted to remind you that he's there. Some are already coming. Let's stand. Brother Clint, come and get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. If you're not saved, once you come, we'd love to introduce you to Jesus. There's nobody like him. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for always watching over us. Thank you for being a present help in time of need. Lord, you're always a watch, and help us to watch. The psalmist said, I'll look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Help us keep our eyes on you. Lord, bless this invitation. Speak to hearts. I don't know anybody's heart, Lord, but you know everybody's heart. God, if there's somebody here that doesn't know you, I pray you'd speak to their heart. Help them to know they can be saved, they can be born again. Help them to come, put their faith in the Lord. Lord, or somebody here say, but Lord, they're in church, but their heart's far from you. I pray they get their heart made right today. God, just do work in this invitation. Just touch people's hearts and lives. Father, we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.